on the day of the Lord's wrath. For I will leave in the midst of you, a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lie, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Then they will pasture and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to our song is page 121 in the Catholic Book of Worship. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. God is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. It's okay. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings today treat of something that is at the very base of what it means to be a believer in the God that comes from the scriptures or that is written about in the scriptures, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that is humility. In the first reading it says to us, seek humility. In the psalm response it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, which is another way of talking about people who are humble. If you're poor in spirit, you are indeed humble. In the second reading it says, to be wise. And wisdom has a great deal to do with being humble. You can't be one without the other. And of course, wisdom is the ability to judge the order in which we apply the values that we hold. And humility is the one that sees what is of value value according to the eyes of God, not according to the eyes of people who don't care as if there is a God. And of course, humility is the antidote to power. As I've said before, uh, usually at the 845 Mass, our religion is all about power. Make no mistake about it. All religions are about power. Just as politics and the way the world goes is all about power. What good is a God if he has no power? That's why we go in for him. He's got power. It's just that there are two kinds of power. There is love, which is power. And never forget that. Love is not a feeling. Love generates the feelings of joy, elation, happiness, delight. Those are feelings. They're wonderful. And they go with love, but they're not love. Love is power. It is the power to want good and do it make it happen. So love is more about what we want, not about what we feel. Because you can want good when you feel lousy. The other kind of power is the power of the world, the power of control. 
And we have a God who takes no control over us. We're free to do whatever we want. And so humility is knowing our place in the power structure. I can describe humility by talking about the kind of love that God has demonstrated. He has power we do not, but he takes no control over us, and therefore to want to be in on his power is an act of humility, faith, and hope. For the humble person obeys the law of love. And the law of love is this. The beloved gives all power over to the lover. But the lover takes no power over the beloved. Now how do you maintain a relationship like that? It's very simple. And I'll give you examples of what to think about in order to understand a relationship where the beloved gives all power over to the lover. And yet the lover takes no power because the lover only wants good for the beloved. And so they can't take power. You see it in little children every day. And it's one of the fundamental beliefs in our faith called grace. You give gifts to children because you love them. And the child, knowing that it is loved, takes the gift and is delighted. That's humility. Knowing how to take a gift with thankfulness. So you see that humility and thankfulness are twin sisters. They're like, uh, they go together. They're, they're like, uh, Basil and tomatoes, chocolate and coffee, beer and peanuts, they go together. Knowing how to be thankful. Now why is that so important? Because you see the Holy Eucharist, which is at the very heart of all of our relationship with God and his to us, as it was to Israel, there was the sacrifices, which is God's gift to us. The proper word for the, for, for the Mass is Eucharist, which comes from the Greek Eucharistia, which means thanksgiving. In the very early church, as it moved from the Aramaic language of the Jewish Christians to the Greeks, there was a part where they would say, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right and just. Well, that phrase, let us give thanks in ancient Greek, as actually in Greek today, is eucharistumen, Eucharist. That's the only way that we can relate to God is to give thanks. That's the best thing we can do for God. Just as a child, in thanking, being thankful for the gift is humble. It's the right relation to the giver who gives in love. Think also maybe of the example of a young woman who accepts from her beloved an engagement ring. Or I see the, saw this so many times when I would do a wedding how the bride would take the ring 
from the groom as he put it on her finger. The perfect act of humility. There is joy and thankfulness in the very heart of the bride. As in the groom when she gives the ring. That's humility. When we say, the priest says, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We say, it is right, we lift them up to the Lord, and it is right and just. That's humility. Why? Because one of the most fundamental beliefs, certainly in the Catholic form of Christianity, as in really the Eastern Orthodox, and, and I'm sure the Protestants would agree to it, is that everything is a gift. You know, there's three places in the Bible where God says to Israel, you will come before me with hands filled, mean bringing offerings. And then God says, don't ever say in my presence, I did it. One time a friend of mine was very, very proud of himself because he came over here as an immigrant. He worked hard. He bought a beautiful house for his wife and he sent his three children to university. And he had a right to be proud. But I reminded him, remember, you had the good fortune of always having a job. That was a gift from God. Everything is a gift. Life itself is a gift. Being born is a gift. Everything. As the scriptures say, all is grace. And the word grace is simply a word for gift. The Latin word for gift is gratia, which comes to the English through the French Norman, grace or grace, which is why you say grace before meals. It's thanks. And the grace of God gives the gift. In Italian is grazia. It's Spanish gracias. Everything is grace. And if you really don't buy that, you got a rock in front of you in trying to be an authentic worshiper of God. My sisters and brothers, let us stand and confess the faith which the church teaches. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. We make now our humble prayer and supplication. For those who are working for peace, that their efforts may bear fruit, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that they may set their hearts on the kingdom of God and its justice, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in positions of authority, that they may be gentle and merciful in their dealings with those they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn, may they be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer doing what is right, may they be strong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, that we may hunger.
hunger for a life of goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our sick relatives and friends, we pray for those names listed in our bulletin sick list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died this past week, especially those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special needs and all those who have asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, especially in the Ukraine, we ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother, the Queen of Peace, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. As we remember the most holy ever Virgin Mother Mary, Saint Joseph and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to God the Father, to God the Son, to God the Holy Spirit. Amen. and my brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our salvation. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal Easter mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being called now a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing our thanks to your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, the blood to be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Father, the life-giving bread, the saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and worship you. Humbly we pray that as we partake of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Draw him with him in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Confidence, pray to God the words our Savior taught Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's love and peace.
May the body of Christ be for us the source of life everlasting. Amen. And may the blood of Christ take away our sins. May it fill us of the Holy Spirit and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
five years here at St. John's, I haven't seen this. Look at that, there's no room for me up there. Isn't that wonderful? I think they should be commended, shouldn't they? All six of them today. That's wonderful. Just goes to show you, I think we're doing something right. Thanks. Uh, thank you to all of you for coming this evening here to celebrate with us. To Father Frank for being here. Father Bob is away on a much-deserved vacation. He is golfing somewhere in Florida. Uh, thank you for the musicians, Sylvia and uh, uh, Anthony. Anthony, yeah, I got that right. Yeah. Uh, and there are some announcements here. Edge. A program here at uh, uh, St. John's, as you know, it's a ministry, or you may not know, it's a ministry for grades 5 through 8, and it's headed by, of course, Sylvia and other youth of our parish, and we are together again on February 5th from 1, uh, after 1 o'clock. Uh, baptism preparation is happening this Wednesday at 7.30, but just as a warning, I'm heading that one, so <clears throat> you may not want to come. The Provide a Meal uh, program is back on again, full swing. And uh, last weekend, there were 66 chilies picked up. So thank you to all of you who have con contributed to, uh, to this, to help those who have no food. Uh, once again, thank you very much for coming. And please stand for our closing prayer. We have been nourished by these saving gifts. And we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to our eternal salvation, true faith and humility may ever increase in our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.